The world of work is changing, but why is it changing? How is it changing? And what should you and your organization do about it? Hi, my name is Jacob Morgan. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and futurist, and on this show, I'm going to help answer all of these questions. Join me as I go inside some of the world's most forward-thinking companies to tour their offices and interview their executives and employees. Welcome to the Future of Work. When most people think of the future of work, they think of a technology company. But today we're visiting the offices of Mission Bell, a 220-person millwork manufacturing company based an hour south of San Francisco in Morgan Hill. You can already hear the giant log cutters behind me, and that's because Mission Bell works with a lot of wood. Not like a technology company, but clearly they are still thinking about and concerned with the future of work. We're gonna go inside, get a tour of their office, speak with some of their employees, and of course, see what their CEO thinks about the future of work. Let's go inside, take a look. So I'm here with the CEO of Glenn Ripley. He's the CEO of Mission Bell. Glenn, thank you for having us. Thanks, welcome. And so we're gonna learn a little bit more about what Mission Bell is doing and what they think about the future of work. So, it's all yours. Great, welcome. Well, we are a uh, architectural millwork firm, meaning we make millwork, which are wood products, cabinets, paneling, trim, uh, and, but we, the work we do is all custom, so it's typically designed by an architect, so hence architectural millwork. And we, uh, we design, we build, and we install all of our products. And so we'll see at least two parts of that today. Great. So we can uh, head this way. So this is our IT area, and increasingly our business is driven by data. Uh, really, essentially, what we do is we take a thought in an architect's mind, in a client's mind, and we're going to turn that thought into a reality. And so how that begins is by trying to capture their conception of what they want in their space in a drawing, working either with an architectural drawing or some sort of rendering, and then we convert that to uh, a shop drawing, which at that point is still all data. Yeah. And then uh, once we've formalized the design and have that approved, the, the data is sent to our manufacturing team where they have computer controlled equipment which begins fabricating and then finally we assemble and then install the product. It's funny because most people think a manufacturing company is just manufacturing, but you guys are actually, <laughs> you have a lot of data and technology that runs the business. Traditionally woodworking has been, you know, one of the, the last of the real yeah. crafts. We have some amazing craftsmen in our shop and, and they can start with a piece of wood and fabricate almost anything you can think of. So this area houses our estimators, project managers, and engineers and uh, they're kind of mixed in through this area so that we have a collaborative environment where people can quickly and easily interact on sp specific projects. So this is an engineering space and you can see he's got two monitors and his laptop and we're typically, we've gone from having typically one computer, one monitor to two to three. I, I, I fully expect we'll be to four any day. So one of the things that we're proud of at Mission Bell and kind of sets us apart from some of our local competition is that we actually lay up our own veneers and uh, a number of mill workers don't do that. And so we will get um, these very thinly sliced pieces of exotic wood and then um, match them for grain, make sure that there's no deformities or, or defects and then glue them onto a core or substrate and then use that for paneling or hmm. for um, casework. There's a real science to understanding the, the grain of oh, wood and how to, <laughs> how to match it and lay it up in a way that's attractive. I have no client, doubt but. that it is a very difficult skill. So it comes in in a packet and it's already sequenced and then we're going to work from that sequenced packet and then we would take it, we'd lay out a sheet here, look for any kind of defects or anything that we, we don't want to have, and then we take it to this machine, which is just like a giant guillotine, and it will, he's actually going to slice a little piece here, so. Oh, and it chops off the... And it chops off to make a, a clean, straight edge. You see the way it comes in, it's kind of rough. Yeah. And so that's going to make a nice, clean, uh, straight edge. And then what we're going to do is take it over to the, the machine behind here and actually glue 
the veneer edge to edge, hot glue it so that it makes a double wide piece. Oh, okay. So these guys are actually moving some equipment. One of the things when we came into this building, we wanted to be able to be agile in the workplace, in, yeah. in the market. And so we know that laminate tops are going down and solid surface tops are going up and that's gonna affect our product and how many of a certain type of product we build. Or maybe we wanna have a more efficient flow of our manufacturing process. So uh, we've designed this building to be able to be reconfigurable quickly with our own team without having to have a lot of expense. This is the, the layup area where we would take a sheet of laminate or veneer, put it on a core, put it into this press, and then this entire unit comes up and puts about uh, 500 pounds of pressure at 300 degrees and, and uh, makes that Wouldn't want to be permanent, stuck in there. permanent piece of material. We do have a, a Mission Bell ongoing training initiative to train individuals in the, in the tasks they need for their job. But beyond that, we're looking at a more global initiative just to help people increase their general aptitude in what is an increasingly a digital world. Yeah. And so we feel like we, we owe it to our employees. We're not all just about making money ourselves, but we really want to see all of our employees succeed in the long run and be prepared for the world that's going to Absolutely. await them five years from now that perhaps they're even unaware now sure. of how important being comfortable with computers is. We lay out the job digitally before we ever start actually manufacturing. And uh, then the information which is compiled by the engineer is sent down electronically to the shop where the process begins right here with pulling the material. And so if we're building uh, a break room for Google yeah. and we're going to use plywood and melamine and MDF, then the number of sheets we need would be sent down uh, automatically by the computer to this uh, robotic material handling system and uh, IntelliStore. The IntelliStore. And the IntelliStore then knows exactly what is behind that fence, which pile it's in. It doesn't have to all be like material in one pile. It can, it can be a mix, we call it a rainbow stack. It'll move other pieces away to get to the piece at once because it knows where every single piece is. How does it know where everything is? It's all in the computer. So when it's loaded in, we bring it into the import bay, and then we say, load this material in. And then the IntelliStore has enough intelligence to decide where it's going to stack material and remember exactly where it put every single wow. sheet. We increasingly talk about augmenting our workforce with robotics and with machines. Not replacing. It's just straight automation. So we're, we're not about replacing our workers. We're about growing without having to add people but leveraging the talent we have on those tasks that really require human intelligence and using automation for manual tasks, maybe moving yeah. uh, pieces from one. Lifting heavy things. Yeah, that kind of thing. Well, thank you very much for showing us around. It was really interesting to learn about how everything gets put together. You're welcome. Yeah. Glad to have you here. Thank you. My name is Christian Zorio. I'm the Chief Learning Officer here at Mission Bell. And my primary responsibility is to drive the corporate strategy by linking it to the development of the employees here. And so we've got a good tie in there. Now, you guys are a manufacturing company. Right. Most people, when they think of a chief learning officer, they think of somebody that works at a tech company. But you guys are in the manufacturing space and yeah. you're a chief learning officer. Yeah. So how does that work? What's that all about? Yeah, that is what's really great about Mission Bell. We've got a great CEO who's super innovative. And uh, not too long ago, he made a fairly remarkable statement where he said, we want to move from a mill working company that works with technology to a technology company that happens to work with wood. And so part That's a great soundbite, I like yeah, that. that is good. And part of that change was a cultural change as yeah. well. And so they wanted to make learning a priority. And so here I, here I am. So when you think about how the workplace is changing and what the future of work is going to look like, I mean, what, are, what pops into your mind? Innovation, uh, learning as a key to innovation. Um, Has learning changed at all? Well, I think the way in which we learn is beginning to change. There's so many resources out there for yeah. people to take advantage of that are online. 
Uh, I think for us though, what's really critical is in knowledge and skill-based industries, which we are in, your, your chief competitive advantage is can you learn faster than everybody else. I talk about that all the time. No one can take that away from you. Yeah. No one can steal that from you. So if you've got a company of adept learners, you will do well. So obviously, you know, robotics and artificial intelligence is a big theme for the future of work. Right. What do you think about robotics and artificial intelligence? Okay, so that's a good question. So when we think of robotics and artificial intelligence, we, we primarily think we use the word automation. And when people hear the word automation, they think my job is going to be taken yes, by a robot. all the time. And that's not what we're saying, because we value relationships and we value creativity. And so we want to talk about that in terms of augmentation. Mm -hmm. What can robotics, what can machines do to augment sure. the unique creative abilities of human beings? To keep them there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So we don't want to lose that at all. That's not what we're saying. So, so augmentation, not automation. The out there that can do a lot of- Transport the product. Yeah, a lot of transportation. I mean, actually can do quite a bit. It's pretty fascinating. And so, but the design of it and, and the informing of what that machine should do and how it should do its work and best practices, that's something mm. that we want to keep with our human, human capital, so to speak. What do you think about autonomy and flexible work? I love and it. things of that nature. I love flexibility. I yeah. think that's really increasingly important, not just for millennials. I, I think. I was just going to ask you about millennials too. Yeah, when we, I think millennials have become more of a. It's more of a state of mind and yeah. a, an ideal state than it is a particular age group. I like that you say that. So when we talk about flexibility and innovation and technology and passion. I think that's what everybody's looking for, not just a particular yeah. age. I think younger employees and millennials bring a little bit more passion, for sure, and I think that's helpful to integrate into the workplace. Uh, but I think all those things are really, really important. I'm Richard Topete, and I run the CNC. And for those people that aren't familiar with the CNC, what is that? Uh, it's a machine that runs CAD files, which are computer-assisted drawings. Hmm. And so it, <clears throat> it prints out the, the shapes or uh, it takes uh, geometries that are drawn in CAD and it, it applies a toolpath to it and it cuts out any geometry you can, any, any geometry you want. And how long, how long have you been over at Mission Bell? I've been working at Mission Bell for the last 14 years. Wow. Yeah. And have you seen things change quite a bit over the course of your 14 uh, years? Technology has grown a lot since I've been here. Yeah. A lot, yeah. So, Change. you know, most people always say, oh, technology is just for tech companies, and uh, obviously you guys are in the manufacturing space. Yeah. So, what sort of technology are you guys thinking about? Um, we use all sorts of computers. We use iPads in the fields. I oh, mean, really? You guys have iPads and tablets out all, there? All our installers use iPads. We so, use, what do they use the iPads for? We can, we can relay drawings back and forth to each other. Real time. It's real time collaboration yes, back and forth. Back and huh. forth. <laughs> so we can go in the field and change the drawing, and I can literally get it in a matter of minutes and then change it on the machine, change the geometries. What about these uh, robots and machines? Do you think one day they're going to just take over all the jobs in manufacturing and there's not going to be people anymore? Uh, I don't know about that. We're going to need somebody to fix those robots. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ro robotics definitely. I mean, uh, I think it's going to be a big part of the future. And do you think machines are just going to take over everything? Like they will do all the things that people here do now manually? Um, I think we're far away from that. Yeah. But uh, it's coming. Definitely. Uh, I know there's a high school that offers uh, robotics classes. <laughs> they're I, already offering it. They're offering robotics classes. I know there's a, a an orchard supply in San Jose that has robots to actually stock the shelves now. Really? Yeah. So. Are you worried about that, like for your job and for your security? Uh, nah, I'm not worried. No? no Why not? not? I'm good at what I do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you think if you're good at what you do as a human, you still have a lot of that advantage over... Absolutely. Over Absolutely. Security. I'm good at what I do. I love what I do. I mean, you can't, can't take that away from me. What do you care about most in a company as far as why you work there? Like, what is the most important thing for you? Uh, just the ability to learn more, keep growing, and uh, they seem to offer that here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the number one thing. That matters more Got for you to, than, keep learning. than money and everything else. Absolutely. I'm happy, I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah. So uh, it's a good place. What do you think is important for a leader? Or what do you think makes a good leader or a good manager or a good CEO? Um, someone that's on the front lines with you. Yeah. A good leader is working overtime with you. And we have that here. You know, uh, my manager, he's here when I'm here. Somebody that's side by side with yeah, you. Yeah, he's here. he's here when I get here in the morning. 
things here when I leave. You know, I work one of the busiest machines here. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he's he's here with me. He doesn't have to be here, but he's you know. So he goes out of his way to help you. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'm Bev Stengem, and I'm the director of human resources here at Mission Bell. Well. HR is a super exciting place because when a lot of people think about how the workplace is changing, they always think of HR. Um, so what are, what's on your mind as far as how the work is changing? What do you think about? I think the work is changing that we are looking for a lot more technical ability in people and the ability to learn quickly. Because our world is changing so quickly yeah. and software systems change so quickly, even the iPhone changes every year or so, right? Yeah. So we need people that can um, adapt and be flexible and scale their learning. Do you think HR has changed at all over the last like 15 years? I do. I think we've moved more from the people police and the command and control sort of a um, position to more collaborative. Yeah. And we want to partner with our managers to make sure that we are um, hiring the right people and fostering the right work environment that yeah. people want to come in and work for us. Yeah. Do you think management or being a manager has changed at all over the last 15, 20 years? Yes. Like I mentioned, we've moved away from that command and control, that authoritative yeah. stance to more collaborative and um, caring about your employees. I see a lot more care. Caring? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, employees want to feel cared about. And there's That's a saying crazy. that, you know, people don't care until they know how much you care. Yeah. So I think it's important. Everybody wants to feel valued. Sure. And they want to feel like they're making a difference. So how can we help employees feel that way? And I think a big way is um, to help people feel engaged. We've got the Lean Initiative here at Mission mm -hmm. Bell, which has been a huge success. It's made a big difference in how so people that? feel. Well, Lean is all about making improvements, using your brain to uh, improve, make improvements in what you do every day. It can be the simplest little thing, but we're encouraging people to um, speak up and to contribute their ideas, and people love that. They feel like they're making a difference on hmm. a daily basis, and it's very exciting. So you are the CEO of Mission Bell. Guilty as charged. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the future of work? I think work is a lot of fun because there is a lot of change going on yeah. and we are struggling to understand what that change is going to mean for us, but excited about the opportunities and where we're going as a company. What do you think about the design of a workspace? Obviously in the manufacturing space, your workspace is different than what most people watching this would have as their workspace. But still, in our conversations previously, you were thinking about the design and layout. So what factor does the physical environment play in how work gets done? I, I think for us, there's an interesting balance between that need for some roles in our company to be able to be quiet and focused on a particular task for perhaps an extended period of time and the need for collaboration. And, and collaboration is going to lead toward more open design and, and uh, reconfigurable workspaces. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of our future. Um, but we, we still need to be able to preserve that ability for certain individuals in particular to be able to concentrate and focus. I think one of the major changes for us will be the expansion into remote workers and mm. that ability to have an engineer working in another city or even another state yeah. and still be able to collaborate when they need to collaborate. That's going to require better technologies. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the video conferencing technologies that large companies that have huge budgets yeah. can install are, are not available to a small manufacturer like us. And so we struggle sometimes to be able to get that connectivity we see the ads for on TV because we can't afford to put in that sophisticated system. Yeah, 100 system. grand for like a TV. And, and yet we need it. We yeah. need that uh, collaborative mm. uh, experience for remote workers that's still high quality and, and can be immediate when it needs to be. So I, I think we'll get stronger and stronger at that. And I yeah. think that'll be part of the the design of our workspaces in the mm. sense that we'll have remote workers. Well, I'm glad you mentioned because, you know, what do you think makes a great leader or an executive? I came up through human resources. That's really? my, my entire career was, was HR. And uh, I think 
it's been, that was a wonderful career path for me because I think for our company in this day and age, it's crucial to understand how to match competencies with with the work that needs yeah. to be done. Whether that competency has to do with learning agility or constructability knowledge or collaboration effectiveness. And so uh, I, I think a CEO has to be very, uh, uh, have to have a, a good understanding of the work that needs to be performed and then be able to align and optimize the right people to hit it out of the park. If you were giving advice to employees that are watching this, that are thinking about how they can stay relevant as the workplace keeps changing, what advice would you give them? What I've told, told my own sons is you, you need to really think about constantly being open to learning new tasks in new ways. Hmm. And, and I think that is a key to the future because I think as I was coming up through the workforce, it was all about what you've done, where you went to school, what yeah. your resume said. That's increasingly irrelevant. Now is the, whatever work I'm going to be doing two or three years from now, probably no one does today. Yeah. And it's going to, and, and you're going to have to be able to, to learn on the fly. You're going to have to be able to adapt quickly and find how to add value to an organization. You know, it's interesting. A lot of uh, the people that we've spoke to here said that you are famous for saying that you're not a manufacturing company that uses technology. You're a technology company that happens to be in manufacturing. What do you mean by that, and why is what do you think about technology in the future of work? Yeah, so so we're obviously not a technology company in the sense of what people typically think of, in, in that we don't sell technology, we don't develop or sell technology. But technology is the lifeblood of our business, yeah. and unless we can harness the the technology and manage the the bits and bytes and data, uh, for a typical just a simple job at a high tech company. We've got uh, literally a million numbers or pieces of data that we have to manage and integrate into a project. And so technology is the key to that. Uh, so you guys and are working with big way. data and all that sort of stuff. We have to understand how to uh, I interpret in a, in a data-driven world the reality that we're building to and that we're going to install our products into. Mm. And so uh, technology is is the key to that. Wow. Without the people, and, and I've heard you say before, it's it's about the people and about IT and the technology. Yeah. And that is just as true for a manufacturing business like ours, maybe more than, than what some people think of as a technology company. But having people that are open to that and then having the, the technology uh, kind of the engine that drives our business sure. is key. If you had to think of a word or phrase that sums up the future of work, what word or phrase would pop into your mind? It might be innovation. Innovation? Uh, I think being open to new ways, new processes, new technologies uh, can kind of all be summarized in, in innovation. And I think companies have to be innovative, leaders have to be innovative, they have to be change agents and drive toward the new innovations yep. that will drive us forward in our business. So I just spent a couple hours on site with the folks over at Mission Bell. We spoke with their CEO, employees, and got a tour of their amazing office. It was really cool to see the actual manufacturing facility. They got a pair of these nice spiffy glasses here. It was really fascinating to hear that even Mission Bell, which is not in the technology space, is still concerned with things like robots and automation, employee engagement, health and wellness, and they're thinking about new management models and the future of work. So it's really fascinating to see that regardless of what industry we're in, the future of work touches every company in every industry. And I look pretty damn good in these glasses. Might keep a pair. Thanks for watching the Future of Work show. To sponsor an episode or to have your company featured in the show, email me, jacob at thefutureorganization.com. I'll see you in the future.